the latest. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Justin Case. A 28-year-old man is dead after a Middlesbrough apartment fire earlier this morning. When firefighters went inside the building, they say they found Trey Branscombe. As officials transported him to the hospital, they say he died. I went to Middlesbrough today and talked with officials at the scene, as well as close friends of Branscombe, who say he made everyone feel like family. Early Tuesday morning, firefighters were called to this building. The fire chief says his team went inside right away and found Trey Branscombe. Friends say his love knew no bounds. He loved everybody even if they didn't love him, and I've heard that so much from him. He would talk about how he cared so much for people that it didn't seem like he got the care back, and he just doesn't know how much he was really loved and cared about. Officials at the scene say Branscombe died on the way to the hospital on this day of loss. Friends can't help but remember his caring side. I have a little bit of PTSD, so I'm sound sensitive. And I remember going to Crystal and telling him that it was going to scare me when they started talking to me. And as soon as I got on the intercom, I jumped, and I had to have him order everything. And I'd say we had piles of food that he had to order for me. So. He was just funny and he didn't care to help out. While the cause of the fire is still being investigated, officials believe it could have started inside his apartment. Those who knew him but were not related still feel like they've lost a family member. If there was any time that I needed him, he was right there all the time. I'd invite him over to eat with us. He just literally became a part of the family. Officials will not say if they suspect foul play. They say an autopsy should answer any unanswered questions. It just gives us definite answers on, you know, uh, for sure, you know, if something might have been wrong with him before the fire or if something could have happened to him or if someone could have done something to him, that just give us some, hopefully give us some answers. Remembering a man who many considered family. The fire chief says there were two other people inside the apartment building near the time of the fire. They were able to get out safely before smoke filled the building. The Martin County Sheriff's Department is struggling to keep itself afloat. There are just two paid deputies. Office hours will be cut and the sheriff says they are basically running on donations. In a Facebook post, Sheriff John Kirk explains he cannot run a sheriff's office with no money. Newly elected Judge Executive Bill Davis says the Sheriff's Department is not the only office without money. He hopes to sort out the issues and steer the new year in the right direction. Not only does the Sheriff's Department not have any money, as you know they have indicated, the uh, fiscal court doesn't have very much money either. In Sheriff John Kirk's Facebook post, he says the department is taking donations. If you would like to donate, you can call 606-298-2828. Well, mostly cloudy skies continue across the region. The temperatures have been in the 30s, and I think they're going to stick around those upper 20s, lower 30s for tonight with not much change, at least in temperature. Let's take a look at satellite radar, and you'll notice clouds, the big story. In fact, cloud cover going to be uh, really our story for tonight with cold temperatures as well. You'll notice Interstate 64, traffic moving okay, and even some snow still on the ground there in Moorhead right now in Whitesburg. It's 30 degrees, feels like 24, and your dew point still pretty high for this time of year at 26. Temperatures, they're situated in the 30s. No one yet in the 20s except for Wise where they're at 28. Your Twitter topics, the headlines we're talking about, well, three systems, cloudy skies, and a cold blast ahead. Justin, all that coming up at 11.15. Andrew, thank you. Now to some traffic news to pass along to you. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet officials say a Leslie County road will close briefly for repairs. Starting tomorrow at 8 a.m., a portion of Kentucky 2058 will close between Spruce Pine Creek Road and Lonesome Mountain Road. The road work is expected to be completed by Thursday. Officials are asking drivers to be aware of the work zone, expect long delays and potential road closures.
An upgrade in security is coming to Perry County Parks. Judge Scott Alexander and Sheriff Joe Angle are teaming up to improve the security cameras already in place at the parks across Perry County. They are going to be the same model that is on top of the new police station in Hazard and patched through to the 911 center. So if the sheriff's department can so the sheriff's department can make sure no illegal activities are going on at the parks. I think our parks ought to be accessible 24 hours a day and they ought to be safe 24 hours a day. So uh, I've been talking to her uh, to Sheriff Engel and talking to Paul about uh, trying to get the quality of camera that they've put up in Triangle Park. The cameras will, cl will cost close to $8,000. A man was arrested last night on charges of driving under the influence. A deputy saw Matthew Allen Dale of East Bernstadt recklessly pull out from the shoulder of the roadway. After stopping Dale's pickup truck, the deputy says he smelled alcohol. After checking the license tag, he learned the truck was stolen and a stolen gun was also inside the truck. Authorities say Dale admitted to having six shots of whiskey before driving. This was not his first DUI arrest. Also in Laurel County, a man was arrested for again recklessly driving. Deputies say this man, Emmett Smith, this a deputies arrested this man, Emmett Smith, this afternoon after receiving a complaint of a blue truck driving recklessly. Deputies found the driver with a needle, two short straws, and a bent spoon, all with a white powder substance on them. Smith was taken to the Laurel County Detention Center. This morning, Pike County's Department of Protection and Permanency met to pre-plan for Child Abuse Prevention Month. During the month of April, this group puts on multiple countywide activities to spread awareness, from pinwheel fundraisers to a 5K, which typically brings out around 500 runners. One of the organizers, Kendra Hensley, says this year they want to make it all about the children and their families. It's protecting our children, making sure they're safe, and making sure they understand that they can come to us. So we wanted to start this more this year towards involving families and involving the whole community. Hensley says anyone is welcome to attend the meetings. The group plans to meet again on the 19th of February. Rescuers work against time to rescue a horse from a Powell County River. The, the horse, named Katie, was found this morning in the Red River. Crews say she was there for at least an hour before she was rescued. Chelsea Jones has more. More than a dozen volunteers had to help Katie get out of the freezing Red River after she slipped into it this morning. Volunteers believe Katie got out of her enclosure and went towards the river, perhaps looking for something to drink when she fell in. It's not clear how long she was in the water, but fortunately her offspring were nearby. They alerted the landowner that their mother needed help. Katie's leg was trapped underneath the tree root and volunteers spent two hours pulling her out the river. It's an emotional thing, you know, I'm an animal lover and you don't want to, you don't want the horse to to die and, and you know being right there with her and being kind of helpless because one person can lift her out so it's just hard just I was just there to comfort the animal really until more help arrived on scene. Once out Katie was too cold and too weak to walk but after eating some peppermint she finally gained the strength to stand up and go into the barn. Now Katie has to go to the vet for a quick checkup, but she's expected to be okay. For now in Powell County, Chelsea Jones, WKYT. Katie's health is being monitored by a veterinarian, but we'll, like we just heard from Chelsea, her health is expected to be okay. Netflix is raising its U.S. prices by 13% to 18%, its biggest increase since the company launched its video streaming service 12 years ago. Its most popular plan will see the largest hike to $13 per month from just $11. That option offers high-definition streaming up on up to two different internet-connected devices simultaneously. The extra cash will help pay for Netflix's huge investment in original shows and films. Senator Rand Paul is getting surgery to repair a hernia after an injury he received in November of 2017 when his neighbor assaulted him over a property dispute. Senator Paul is getting the surgery in Canada. Ontario's public health insurance does cover many of the procedures conducted at the facility for Canadian citizens, but as an American, Senator Paul will have to pay for his care. 
I looked for you know a place that did primarily that type of surgery, uh, a place that actually accepts Americans who pay cash. It's a private hospital. He is getting the surgery at Shoulders Hernia Hospital. Senator Paul says there are centers in the United States that are similar, but they do not specialize in the surgery that he needs. A well-known Republican is still talking about jumping into Kentucky's governor's race. Congressman James Comer says he's been getting a lot of encouragement to run. Comer narrowly lost to Bevin in the 2015 GOP gubernatorial primary. As of now, Comer says he will only run if Governor Matt Bevin is out. I'm getting calls from all over the state uh, from people not only asking me to be ready in case he doesn't run, but also asking me to run regardless of what decision he makes. So. Uh, I'm still talking to a lot of people. Uh, my focus, obviously, is in, in Congress. He says he has even picked a running mate, though he is not saying who, and has, has the paperwork ready to be filed. Coming up at 11, something we see frequently in the winter months here in Kentucky made for slick roads in Kansas. I'll tell you more coming up. And back here in Kentucky, below freezing temperatures overnight and wet grounds resulted in slick roads and black ice. And the rain chances arrive as we head into the next couple of days. Those details are coming up. Hey, happy baby year from Surplus Sales in Corbin, Kentucky. Did you know we have kitchen and bath cabinets installed and ready to take home? And they are all wood, too. And our prices are so low, they'll make you happy like me. Surplus Sales, flooring, cabinets, and more. You might see it here. Here. Or here. You might see it pretty early on. You can definitely see it here. Oh, that's a good place too. It's something you have to see for yourself. And once you do, you'll see it anywhere you go. We all want more for less, and Spectrum delivers. Spectrum TV has tons of HD, thousands of titles free on demand. Plus your favorite